h4. I go for refuge and tell and lighten to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend faults in human beings. I go for refuge and tell and lighten to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend faults in human beings. I go for refuge and tell and lighten to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to bend faults in human beings. <coughs> Sanye Jura Zoge Junam no Janju Badu Tani Gapsuch Tawe Jin Zoji Besonam Ye Dola Benjir Sanye Dubare Shu Sanye Jura Zoge Junam Janju Badu Tani Gapsuch Tawe Jin Zoji Besonam Dola Benjir Sanye Dubare Shu Sanye Jura Zoge Junam Janjo Pardo Dani Gyasu Che Dage Chin So Kebe Sonam Dola Benjir Sanje Drubare Sho B6 Essence of Dependent Origination Mantra Om Yedara Mahetu Prabhavam Hetum te sham datagato yavatat te sham chayo niroda evam bati mahashramana yeswaha om yedarama etu prabhavam Hetum te sham datagato yavatat te sham chayo niroda evam bhati mahashramana yeswa Om yadarama etu brabhavam Hetum te sham datagato yavatat te sham chayo niroda evam bhati mahashramana yeswaha. Meaning of the mantra. All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the tathagata, the cessation causes as well as taught by the great seer. Te ata om gate gate ara gate ara sam gate bodhi swaha te ata om gate gate Aragate, Parasamgate Bodhiswatyata, Omgate Gate, Aragate, Parasamgate Bodhiswatyata, Om Gate Gate, Paragate, Parasamgate Bodhiswatyata, Okay. Um, where did we leave? We, three tasks of wisdom done. Uh, the, okay, meditation. Third one. The third wisdom. Wisdom draws through meditation. Yes. Bhargade. Meaning. Okay. The meaning of the Heart Sutra Mantra, Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sam Gade Bore Swaha. 
Uh, first, I'll give you the, the very surface meaning now. And later on, we're going to go into more detail. And surface meaning is Tatyatha or the Teyatha. Tibetans read it as Teyatha. And in the Sanskrit, Tatyatha. Tatyatha means here is thus. Here is thus. Gade, gade is go, go. Go, go. Paragade, go beyond. Parasangade, go utterly beyond. Go utterly beyond. Then what is go utterly beyond? Mm, go utterly beyond. Bodhiswaha. Yes, the establish your full awakening. Establish your awakening or establish your full awakening. Okay. Well, okay, venerable, venerable is able to find something. Where is it? Okay, mantra. Okay. I thought that venerable identifies the meaning of the mantra somewhere, <laughs> right? Okay. <clears throat> um, this five, gate, gate, is not just go, go. It has a deep significance there. Deep significance there. Gate, gate, para gate, para sam gate, bodhi swaha. Five steps are taught there. These are known as the five paths. Five paths. Five paths. Um, the first one is the path of accumulation. First gade, part of accumulation. Second gade, part of preparation. Part of preparation. Third, paragate, part of seeing. Part of seeing. Fourth, parasangade, part of meditation. And finally, bodhiswaha, part of no more learning. Part of no more learning. Part of accumulation, the first gade. <coughs> Part of accumulation, second gate, part of preparation, third gate, part of seeing, fourth gate, part of no, first gate, second gate, third paragate, fourth parasangate <coughs> is a part of meditation, bodhiswaha, part of no more learning. Okay. <coughs> Now we are talking about the um, the three kinds of wisdom, and the first two kinds done. Third one, the wisdom draw through meditation. Okay, the third one, wisdom draw through meditation. Um, okay. In the first place. Why do we have to meditate on the wisdom? Anyone? Hey, why do we have to meditate on wisdom? No, my question is, why do we have to meditate on wisdom? Why do we have to experience med? Shvedlana. And the wisdom. Why? Why to come down on mine? What's the problem? The girl there? Has to get used to the rhythm. Why? Here? Yeah. Item of their ignorance. The lead over there. Why should I just see the reality here? Yeah. 
Okay, in order in a lot of why do we need enlightenment? <laughs> Lady over there? In order to remove finally we started when there, you're getting it? To remove the suffering, to expand your happiness. You're getting it? This is the whole point. And for that we get to remove the root of the problem. Root of the problem, self grasping, ignorance. You're getting it? So we have to touch the, the, the ground. Thank you. Okay. So the, the wisdom, the wisdom draws through meditation to remove the our miseries. And what creates miseries? What creates miseries? Ignorance. And they say, what are the problems that you see? Okay, misery is one thing. And what actually triggers miseries? Anyone? Go on, tell me commas. Afflictions. Inner attention. Self grasping ignorance. Very good. Okay. Right? <clears throat> now we see that they are on the same. Particular, say, for example, we engage in negative, turn non virtuous commas. Then these turn non virtuous commas, what make us to engage in these activities? Afflictions. Yes? And the afflictions, the, how fast is the affliction? How fast? Huh? Huh? Instant, right? Instant, like what? For example, the, it is like, what is that? The, what is that? What is that? Short circuit. Right? When short, short circuit happens, it's very fast. <laughs> it's so fast, right? You're stupid, right? You're stupid. Then you don't have time even to think. You're stupid. It's so fast. You're going to get. And then they say, how do you do your anger? Let's say the anger, right? Anger, how the anger rises. When somebody says, hey, you are the stupid person, right? Okay, uh, Ben, should I become angry? Then Ben said, yes, of course. For no reason he's saying, you know, you're a stupid person. Okay, then I made an anger. Is this how anger arises? Or you don't have to ask anybody. It's very instant. Huh? Very instant. This is your anger, your attachment, they are high quality. Yes, they're high quality and so fast. It's very spontaneous. And what, what do we do to remove these? What do we do to remove the negative emotions? Cultivate wisdom, right? Cultivate wisdom. And what is the wisdom like? How fast is wisdom? What's the quality of wisdom, right? In the morning, we have to first bell, they ring the bell. Ding, ding, right? Still the wisdom is not coming, right? And then they say, why bell is ringing so early? Right? You, you know, still the one hour. Right? You notice that? I don't know where this bell is coming from. There's one bell which is ringing like 3.30 or 4. Not this one. Okay. Which is Jiva. Yes. And then the, um, then the wisdom is still not coming. And then the, the, the next bell here rings at one time? Five. 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 Oh, I still have 5.45. Still have 45 minutes. Right? And you put on the, you what, the alarm 45. Still the wisdom is not coming. Still the wisdom wait. <laughs> and then 5.45, the bell rings. Alarm rings, right? Okay, five minutes. First they will just sit. Right? First they will sit. And then they would make prostration, Buddham, Sharan, Gajami, I can be, I can come little late, no problem. But still the wisdom is not coming. Right? Okay. So, what is the wisdom like? Our wisdom to counteract these the negative emotions, there's no quality in it, number one. Number two is so slow. Right? And the negative emotions, they are high quality. So fast, very effective. And the wisdom, no effective. You're getting it? But, but, we have to make it effective. We have to make it effective. Right? Okay. So, just as your negative emo our negative emotions, 
they are extremely high quality, very vibrant, the wisdom also should be very vibrant. Just as your negative emotions are extremely fast, our wisdom also should be very fast, should be made very fast. But it's not fast, at the moment, we should make it very fast. Okay, how fast is wisdom? Let me, let me check. Ready? <clears throat> okay, forget about emptiness. If it's simple wisdom, again, mathematical wisdom. Ready? <laughs> Let's see how fast. Okay, 2 plus 2 plus 3 minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 1 minus 2 plus 2 plus 1. What's the answer? Huh? Eh? What's the answer? No answer. Why not? Why not? Why not? Huh? Our brain does not work so fast. Our mind does not work so fast, right? Our mind works very slow. So it is like, if there any anybody from the, the police department, I'm very sorry, right? So the, the robbers, they come, they effectively rob everything, and then they left, and the police comes after 10 hours. Police for what? To make sure that the robbers cannot attack you. But not all police. Some police are very effective. Some are very effective, but generally, right? Some of them come only after 10 hours. Only after 10 hours. The robber finished and then left. They killed, steal, everything done, finished, they left. And the police comes after 10 hours. Not all, some. Right? Okay. So, in our case, our police is wisdom of emptiness. And in the first, it's not coming in the first place. Right? <laughs> Balance drank. Hey, the police come. Still, they're not coming. So, our wisdom of emptiness. So, how to make it effective? Effective meaning fast and quality. Good. To make it very fast and high quality, very sharp. Very sharp. So this is what we need to do. How to make it happen? How to make it fast? Okay. The when you when you speak English, when you speak and the let's say when you speak Vietnamese, when you speak Russian, Ukrainian, or any other language, Chilean, Spanish, whatever language you speak, how many you are actually thinking that I should work you now I should use the second word? Right? But the wisdom has to be cultivated. Wisdom, the next word should be, has his, you know, you think or is automatically coming. Automatically coming. How does it happen? When you learn a new language, you have to think. When you learn a new language, you have to think. But you are not thinking. It's automatically coming correctly. How did it happen? Through years of practice. You're getting it? So whatever, whatever conviction that you know, whatever conviction that you get, like 2 plus 3, plus 1, plus 3, and so forth, you do this, you know this math, math, mathematical calculation. If I give you time, okay, 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2, and, and give it on paper, paper, and take 10 minutes and do the calculation, you will do it properly. But if I give you like just 3 seconds, you cannot do it. You know how to do it, but you can do you cannot do it fast. How to make it fast? Practice it over and over. over. So practicing, practicing what whatever conviction that you gained, the conviction that you gained through the wisdom drug through reflection. When you make practice over and over again, this is known as meditation. The conviction that you gained. You practice over and over again, it's not as meditation, and then gradually it becomes very high quality, very bright, very sharp, and very fast. So this wisdom only can be this this wisdom alone can be used to remedy the negative emotions. You're getting it? Okay. So the when it becomes very fast, spontaneous, and high quality, that is known as the wisdom draw through meditation. Number three. You're getting it? Okay. <clears throat> Having said this, let's go back to the four seals. Four seals? What is the first seal? Okay, so we, are you all ready? They say one by one. The four seals by heart. Not by the books. Four seals. You ready? Okay, those who are ready, raise hands. Four seals on your fingertips. Raise hands. Raise hands. Four seals on your fingertips, raise hands. 
Som <coughs> okay. Shari Pama tell me what's the first one? All composite things are impermanent. Okay. So now explain each one of them. The each one of these lines. First, all composite things are impermanent. Composite. Composite means the say composite meaning the things come into being by the composition. By the composition of by the composition of by the composition of directional parts and temporal parts. They may repeat it. Things which comes into existence by the composition of directional parts and temporal parts. What is directional parts? What is temporal parts? I'm going to explain it. And directional parts meaning, for example, this this hall. This hall, this should be the east. East direction, west, north, south. So we see that there are four directions. So this has four parts and then top down. Likewise, say the even this pillar, just a pillar. Again, pillar also has four directions. So it can be divided into parts, directional parts. So for the physical body, <clears throat> for physical body, uh, we can see them in directional parts, see them having directional parts. And for the mind, for the mind, uh, we don't see any directional parts because they don't, direction is related to space. So since, since the mind does not have space, it does not have the directional parts. It only has <coughs> temporal parts. Temporal parts meaning parts in time. Parts in time. What do you mean by parts in time? Parts in time or temporal parts. It means, for example, let's say that, okay, um, I'm happy today. When I say I'm happy today, today's the time. Today has how many hours? 24 hours. So we see that it has 24 parts. 24 parts in time. The first hour, moment of the mind, second hour mind, second, third hour mind, fourth hour mind, and so forth. First hour mind again has many more parts. For the one hour has how many minutes? 60 minutes. So first minute mind, second minute mind, third minute mind. <clears throat> in other words, <clears throat> the mind does not have directional parts. Mind has temporal parts. Physical body has directional parts as well as temporal parts. In other words, all impermanent phenomena, all composite phenomena should necessarily have temporal parts, but those with physical body also have also have directional parts. You getting it? Okay. Now, what the Buddha taught is that all composite things, anything which is composed of directional parts or temporal parts, should necessarily be impermanent in nature. <clears throat> all composite things are impermanent. It's not that everything is impermanent. You're getting it? And some teachers who are extremely learned, they may very casually say that in, everything is impermanent. So in their mind, they actually mean the, all everything which is composite is impermanent. You're getting it? But not that everything literally is to be taken as impermanent. That's not true. Because composite because phenomena or existence, what exists can be divided into two groups, impermanent and permanent. Two. Not that everything is impermanent. They are permanent phenomena also. You're getting it? I know that you, many of you want to know what is permanent phenomena. If you're interested, we'll discuss this later on, or you can discuss group, the group discussion, or when you get a little time for a question and session, you can bring this up. Okay, who's going to bring this up? Raise hands quickly. One, two. Are you good enough? Two of you will bring this up. When we get a little time for a question and session, you bring this up. Okay, in other words, that in the according to Buddhist philosophy, that what exists can be divided into two. Not that what exists should always be impermanent. No. What exists, there are two kinds, permanent and impermanent. And only the composite phenomena are impermanent. Non-composite phenomena are permanent. You're getting it? 
What exists, there are two kinds, composite phenomena and non-composite phenomena. Only non-composite phenomena impermanent, oh, sorry, composite phenomena impermanent and non-composite phenomena are permanent. You're getting it? Okay, so, um, the, the, I know that you're so impatient to learn what is non-composite. Huh. Mind is composite. Composite phenomena and impermanent phenomena, these two are same. same. These two are synonymous. Composite phenomena and impermanent phenomena. Mind is also impermanent phenomena. Mind is composite phenomena. Mind is composite of, is composition of temporal parts. Okay. <clears throat> now, all composite phenomena are impermanent. For example, like the, okay, look at the yeah, look at this flower. Do you see this flower changing? Do you see it's changing? Oh, you don't see it changing, right? It looks so static. This is the limitation of our eyes. There's a limitation of eyes, and your answer is correct in ways that you can see this is not as changing. But if you look at it under electron microscope on the molecular level, you see that it is in vibration form. You're getting it? Vibration form. This is changing actually. And according to physics, by the way, is there anybody from the physics PhD? Did PhD in physics? Okay, never mind. Um, say that the physical body, which composes of composed of electrons, protons, neutrons. So the, they're actually in the new, particularly the electrons. Electrons around the, the nucleus, proton and neutron, electrons, they're constantly in movement. Some say in the form of cloud, enveloping the whole, the, and some say that it's a localized, localized space moving, right? Whatever the case, it is constantly in movement. And this movement determines the heat, temperature. More the movement, more the heat, more the higher the temperature. Okay. <clears throat> so with this all composite phenomena, nobody see that they should necessarily be impermanent. And impermanence, there are two kinds. Gross impermanence and the subtle impermanence too. And this morning we talked about three kinds of impermanence. That is a different classification. So this, what we do now, is a very standard classification, gross impermanence and subtle impermanence. Gross impermanence is impermanent phenomena. What is gross impermanence? Is an impermanent phenomena whose continuum comes to an end, whose continuum terminates. Gross impermanence is impermanent phenomena whose continuum comes to an end, whose continuum terminates. For example, 2022. 2022 is gone or not gone? 2022 continuum finished. Okay. And our youth, our youth gone or not gone? Our youth gone or not gone? Huh? Right? Some who are my age still, they think that my youth is not gone. <laughs> right? Right? Maybe here, maybe one or two, maybe the younger ones there, right? They they would think that, no, 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 our youth is not gone. But younger than then, 16 years old, we'll tell them that they are gone. Right? Okay. So, the point is that the our youth, our youth, our youth, invariably, it goes away. This gross impermanence. Beautiful sunset. People enjoy watching the sunset. And beautiful sunset in few minutes is gone forever, right? Beautiful spring, beautiful spring. For example, the in Russia, Europe, the Ukraine, and other Scandinavian countries, right? In the winter is very long, right? Dark, and the spring comes. You are very happy. Again, the winter comes. Again, it's gone. The spring for that year is gone. So this is, is so important for us to reflect on this. You and myself, all of us, is so important for us to reflect on this. All composite things are impermanent, particularly the gross impermanence. We need to reflect on the gross impermanence. 
right? And the, the more we reflect on this gross impermanence, that, for example, when you look at the flower now, here, it's so beautiful. But if you, you, can, you can just, when you see this beautiful means, that you see this flower within a very short span of time. If you widen this, this gap of the time, the range of the time, bigger, 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 10 years, okay, say just few minutes, one day, one week, 10 week, 10 month, one year, 10 years, 20 years from that, if you look at this, 20 years in the future, from there, if you look at this, what happens? This is, the beauty is gone. You're getting it? so again another way by which to demarcate between who is the ordinary person versus a evolved person, wise person. Ordinary person sees things from very localized. Okay, flower beautiful, alcohol very nice, drugs very nice. You know, very localized, see very short duration of time. Wise people see things from a broad range of time. Right? What is this? You know. Flower, somebody gives you a flower, thank you, it's good, appreciate it, right? Deep inside, not really attached, because you see from the broad range of time. So, after this, is, this falls in the category of the gross impermanence. The beauty will terminate, invariably, it will terminate one day, right? So, you see things from broad range, your mind will become, remain very firm, not affected easily by attachment and aversion. This is so important. So we need to learn how to look at things from, so at the moment our mind is so localized, seeing things from a very short range of time. And in space also, very short range of time in space. You're getting it? So when we see things only from a very short range of space and time, we can easily be affected by the emotions, attachment, aversion. Whereas if you see things from space, bigger space, time, bigger range of time, your mind will remain very firm. You will not be affected easily by the emotions, attachment, anger, and so forth. Okay. So let me give you one example. Say the, um, so these are things that we need to learn, right? We don't expect that this will happen one day. No, we have to learn these skills. How to see things from very broadly in time and in space. For example, those people who can think broad in time and space, these people, these people will think of taking the responsibility of the whole humanity. Those people who can see the whole world as one entity, not as my country, your country, not as you know, my religion, your religion, but as a whole one entity, these people can think of the whole world. So we're talking about may I become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings, not only one world. Not only one world, this world is just a tiny dot in the Milky Way galaxy. It's a very tiny dot in the expanse of the Milky Way galaxy. And Milky Way galaxy is a very extremely tiny dot in the expanse of the visible universe. And the visible universe is a very tiny dot in the, the, in the framework of the whole universe. In other words, what we are seeing today as a world is like a tiny, tiny, tiny dot in space and also in time. So those people who can see very broadly, otherwise we suffer a lot. I'll give you one example. See, what's the problem with the small children? Small children, like age four, five, six, the parents say, hey, you have to go to see, hey, get up, you have to go to school. No, I have a stomach ache. I have a day, uh, Right? Okay, now you can stay instead of going to the playground. No, or they now notice they not even go to the playground with a gadget, PlayStation. Right? Okay. So the um what's their problem? They're small children, they're small child. why? They don't see things in broad in space or in time. Hey, what do you think? They don't see things broader in time or space. They don't see, yes, in time, because they don't see what is after 10 years. You're getting it? If I continue to be like this, after 10 years, this will not give me food. Right? This PlayStation will not give me food. Right? I have to study. So these small children, they don't see what is beyond after 10 years, after 20 years. Parents see that. 
So therefore, the parents are known as adult, and this, the child is known as the small child. You're getting it? So those people who see only things from a very small localized time and localized space, these, peop these people, in fact, who are these? Where? We are the ones uh, who suffer. So we see only things, see things from localized, very small range of time, small range of the space. And because of which, we suffer a lot. I'll give you an example. One time, uh, there's one, there's three, one professor and th um, three people came to my office. And then the two of them, they are from two different countries. They're two different countries. And how they behave in front of me is like, these, the, the two are like from the same local place, but they're from two different countries. And how do two different countries? Way, say, the, many years ago, there was no demarcation. It was just like independent communities, no demarcation as countries. And then there are two small communities, which are actually within the same community, but there are two smaller sub communities there, and two of them are fighting, 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 saying that this is our grassland, and this is your grassland, so fighting, fighting, fighting. And they, they, then after, after a while, people from two different countries, they came and they drew a line saying that this is the border, right? Now, it just, what they drew, drew as a line, it just cut across this, this whole community split into two, two they became two different countries, right? And they did not even know. They have no clue. They think that this is my place, this is my place. And then somebody, somebody else from outside came and cut into two and made two different. They can be relatives there, brother, sister, they are split into two, two different countries. What is the problem with these? And then they are shocked. What happened? Right? What happened? We do, it's between two of us and then somebody else came and said that this is the, the two countries. Somebody else came. Right? What's the problem? Because they could not see the broader reality of the world. You're going to get, they were just obsessed with the small localized place. This is my place, this is your place, this is the problem. And somebody else who can see the broader reality came in and said that this is the border. So you cannot go there, you cannot go here. Somebody else from outside came. You're getting it? Okay, that is in terms of space. You cannot see the space and so you're governed by somebody else. It's because of your not having the vision of the bigger space. With the time, Small children. So those, right, when we, when we don't learn how to see things from bigger range of space and bigger range of time, we are described as small children. In the text, oftentimes, Arya beings and ordinary beings. Ordinary beings are referred to as the, child, the small child. Who are these small child? With the beings. You getting it? With the beings. So, but we can become Arya beings, noble beings. How? We can, by broadening our thinking from small range of time to a bigger person like just today, right? Today, oh, we're so happy. Don't be too excited. Today will end. All composition seem permanent. Today will end, and this end at the time, end at the time. Then you try to, we try to learn how to see things from broader range of time. Right? This very tiny insignificant, right? Very insignificant. So when you see from the border range of time, you become a very stable person. For example, say if your salary is let's like, say if your salary is and they say hundred dollars per month, you lose ten dollars is a huge problem or is fine. Hundred dollars per month and you lose ten dollars. Huge or not? It's a huge problem. If your salary is one million per month, you lose ten dollars. Is it huge or not? Nothing. You're getting it because it's all relative. Losing ten dollars is huge or not? It's a relative. So if you can see things very broadly, small small things will not affect you. Your mind will become very stable. You're getting it. This is where then you can go into infinity, and your mind becomes infinitely stable and infinitely happy. Okay, so for this we need to know 
all composite things are impermanent. So impermanent, there are two things, same, the gross impermanence, sudden impermanence. We're talking about the gross impermanence where the continuum terminates. You're getting it? So think of the broader range. Oh, it's very beautiful. I really enjoyed this. The party is so enjoyable. These are all extremely trivial and whose continuum will terminate. You're getting it? And then when the say so when you when, when you, we don't really think about these, for example, like look in the family, in the family, children and the, the parents, husband, wife, brother, sisters, particularly the, the children and the parents, or the husband and wife, right? They see you, husband, wife, right? And parents, children see every day. We think that although if you ask, one day one of you will disappear. Right? You say, yes, that's true. But deep inside, that is not coming because we are just, we are like a small child. Only thing about the very the time, small range of time today, right? And then because of this, you keep fighting, keep fighting. If you could think broader in time, okay, today, and then 10 years. 20 years, in 20 years time, we're not sure if the other person is alive or not. My brother, my, that's my father, my mother, will they be alive? Not sure. When you see that, then you can also see 20 years back in time, when you were a very little girl, little boy, when you were so vulnerable, your parents were there to protect you. And 20 years later, where my parents may be so aged or may even disappear, right? You see from the very broad perspective, then seeing back in time, 20 years back in time, your love for your mother, your love for father, your parents will become more and more evident in you. Think back in time, in the future, think in the future, the broad time in the future, okay, one day my parents will also disappear, right? When we think of this, then the at that point, what would be my reaction? Very simple. Look at the people. Look at the husband, and wife, parents, children. Look at them. When they are alive, they fight. They fight. They fight so badly. They fight. And then suddenly, one dies. And then you regret. You regret terribly. These are small children. You're getting it? So those people who can see things from a broad range of time, okay, so the, so there's no time for us to find. We'll regret. So now, before I regret, I'll make sure that I will not offend this person. I will not harm this person. I will not irritate this person, right? So the, you behave very mature in a matured way. When you behave in a very matured way, other person can feel that from you. Other person automatically like mirror neurons. Other person learn from you how to become matured. And then you see that your family relationship is so beautiful. Even the husband-wife relationship is so beautiful. Parent-children relationship is so beautiful. So if you think like this, immediate time is also very beautiful. Long time is also beautiful. Then when you separation happens, the pain is not there, right? You're prepared. So these are the beauty of Thinking about the impermanence, gross impermanence. So, the Buddha taught that of all the, the footprints, the footprint of the elephant is the supreme. Of all the meditations, meditation on impermanence is supreme. Let me repeat it. What the Buddha taught is that of all the footprints, the footprint of the elephant is the supreme, is the biggest in the eyes of the ordinary people. Of all the meditations, meditation on impermanence is supreme. Okay, this is very important. You may wonder, but we all talked all these yesterday, the whole day we are talking about wisdom of emptiness, wisdom of emptiness. We never talked about impermanence. And today suddenly, he's saying that the wisdom, the meditation of impermanence is supreme. Right? What's this? Okay, so for this, we need to remember that we say that wisdom, empty, wisdom of the impermanence is so important. The Buddha emphasizes so much on this is because that which is more effective? Where say that you dedicate effectively, you dedicate like 
you you've been very consistently study for like say and the six months a particular language versus you on and off on and off on and off you learn a language in six years on and off which do you think is more effective tell me six months because on and off you learn something you forget you learn you forget after six years nothing is left there it's like taking taking you know 10 steps up 10 steps down 10 steps up 10 steps down right funny people how much did you reach 10 steps because the other person, 10 step, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, you reach the destination. So the point is that where, why, why the same person becomes very effective in one situation, in another situation, the, the person simply lacks. Why? Right? So effectiveness, which is the effectiveness, is this good or bad? Effectiveness is very good. We need effectiveness. You're getting it? We need effectiveness. So how to build this effectiveness? Is that imagine that if there is a if there's a snake somewhere there, right? Somewhere in the door, then I may say that I may say that hey Benla, this is a snake there. Would you mind removing the snake? Right? You agree? This is a snake there. And if the snake is here, next to me, will you say, hey, Benla, there's a snake here. Will you remove it? Will I say this? Hey, will you say this? Or what will I do? Yes, if the snake is right here, I don't even have the time to say, Benla, right? I'll jump. Why? Why in the first case, I don't jump. I have time to say, Benla. This thing, they wouldn't mind removing it. In this case, I don't even get time to speak Ben La. I jumped. What's the difference? Where lies the difference? Anyone, quick. Where lies the difference? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Huh? Okay, the girl over there. Huh? Okay, so say for example, my mother is close to me. You jump? <laughs> right? Anyone else? What you said is correct, but we need to know how to articulate it. Anyone? Okay, Sushmita. Very good. This word, sense of urgency. It's very close. Urgency is increased. Far away? Okay, I'll do it later. Oh, Ben, please do it. You're getting it? Okay, tell me. How many of you did this? Tell me when you were in school days or maybe school days is better in school days say the um you learn something you said mathematics science whatever you learn when do you learn more and more the more effectively closer to this exam or further away from the exam closer to this exam why that's very funny right Close to the exam, you learn more, more. You learn more within a short amount of time. You learn more. Further away, like six months away from the exam, you learn. It's not at all effective, right? Okay, why? 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 Closer to the exam, you learn more. You could learn more. Huh? Pressure. Pressure. You're getting it? Pressure, sense of urgency. Sense of urgency. Okay, so meditation impermanence. All composite things are impermanent. This meditation is considered as a supreme of meditation because it gives us a sense of pressure, it gives us a sense of urgency. With a sense of urgency, what you do becomes very effective. Dharma really becomes gade, gade, para gade. It doesn't become like gade, anti, gade, minus gade. Again, gade, manas gade. No, it becomes gade, gade, para gade. You're going to get? So, gade, gade, para gade. Again, yeah? No. Once you read para gade, no, don't, no danger. The manas para gade will not happen. So, gade, the first gade is the most difficult one. Gade, manas gade, gade, manas gade, right? Second gade is stable. Third gade is very stable. It's like a rocket, right? Good. So, that is the gross impermanence. It is so important for us to reflect on the gross impermanence to get a sense of urgency. What is next? Subtle impermanence. 
What is subtle impermanence? Subtle impermanence is a momentariness. Momentariness of all composite phenomena. Momentariness. In other words, say, all imp it's not that all imp composite phenomena, they, they have the nature of, it's not that all composite phenomena should have the nature of gross impermanence. There are some which falls in the category of gross impermanence. But all impermanent phenomena should necessarily have the, have the nature of subtle impermanence. Don't say that every all composite phenomena are subtle impermanence. They're not, but they have the subtle impermanence. Okay, how many you have, how many you have lungs? Raise hands. How many you have lungs? How many you are lungs? Raise hand. How many you are lungs? Raise hand. How many you are lungs? Nobody's lung. But you are, you have lungs. You're getting it? So all composite phenomena have imper subtle impermanence. They are not subtle impermanent. You're getting it? Okay, this distinction we have to make. So now, what is subtle impermanence? This is so, first we have to meditate on the gross impermanence. With the gross impermanence, then we move to the subtle impermanence. What is subtle impermanence? Let's say, this is so important. And don't just let us all. I'm, I'm talking to you, but it's also a reminder, to, uh, the reminder for myself. Let us not just, we learn this. And don't just leave it there on the level of learning. We try to implement it, try to just really contemplate it on it and see if it makes sense to you experientially. Okay. Let's say that at the uh, 2020, 2023, October, today is 8th or 9th? 8th. Okay, 8th, October 2023. And then the, um, say, say the, Chanjibla, Chanjibla said, oh, this beautiful, beautiful group, it's amazingly beautiful group, we will, we're like a family, we will plant a tree as a, as a memory, a memory of our being together, you plant a tree. Then after 10 years, we come back, one tree right next to this hall, below the front of the hall. After 10 years, you come back, and you said that, when you come Bella, how come there's a tree there? There was no tree when we were here last, right? You say that, last year there was no tree in front of the, the hall. How come there's a tree? Very huge tree, 10 feet tall tree, right? Okay, so this 10 tree, then when you come Bella, the, the director of the center said, that, no, 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 your group planted this 10 years ago. Your group planted this. I see. You were surprised because you, you saw from zero to suddenly 10 food, which means big surprise. But then, if you think very carefully, this 10 foot tall, 10 feet tall tree that say, it was not like a suddenly, oh, tomorrow comes the 10 year of this group. So I, I, that's why I've been sleeping as a sleeping as a seed, right? Now I should pop up, pop 10 foot. No, it's not like that. How did you grow 10, the 10 feet? Every year, for 10 years, every year, one foot. Every year, one foot. You're getting it? So this change was happening on the yearly basis, one foot every year. Then by the completion 10th year, then 10 foot, 10 feet. The first year, the first year tree, the first year which was just one, one foot, it's not that for the last 11 months it was slipping. Oh, tomorrow completes the one year of the, the, or the ceremony of being together, right? Okay, I have to go. Suddenly, again, pop. No, it's not like that. Every month, one inch has been growing. Every One inch grown every month. Inch by inch. And the first month, one month, even that, it's not like suddenly one month, right? Every day there is a growth happening. Growth means change. Every day there was a change happening. And one day, whatever the growth taking place in one, one day, there's supposed 24 hours. Every hour it has been changing, every hour. And the change that happened in the first hour is possible with the change happening on the, on the minute level, first minute. Second minute, third minute changing. 
Okay, the wall clock. Wall clock, if you look, look at the wall clock, do you see the minute hand moving? Moving or not moving? You look at the minute hand, is it moving or not moving? You look at it, is it moving? Huh? Very good. Some people say yes, moving. The eyes are very special. As those people who see the minute hand moving, the eyes are very special. Right? So we look at it, you will not see the, the eyes, the, the minute hand moving. Our hand not moving, minute not moving. But second hand, you see it's moving. Tick, 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 tick. Second hand moving. You're getting it? Okay. But the change is happening on the minute level also. Minute, minute hand is also changing. But we don't see that with our naked eyes. And the eyes are so gross. We cannot see that. The change happening on the minute level, one minute is happening because of the change that you see in, on the second level. 60 seconds. So this change is quite visible to our eyes. Tick, 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 tick. The change that you see in one second is happening on the millisecond level. Millisecond is what? One second split into 1000 divisions. How fast it moves? If you don't, if you have no clue, you know, how fast? Like this? Like this? No, this is very slow. This is very slow. You're getting it? If you, if you want to know, then most of our mobiles, they have the one second split into 10 divisions. Some of them split into 100 divisions. 100. So split into 1000 is very specialized mobiles maybe. Otherwise you may download the app. Otherwise you will not get it. So still, just press this, the let's say timer, your timer. Press it, and if it is split into 100, 100 divisions, one second split into 100 divisions, you, it just, you see some movement there, but you don't identify the numbers. In some cases, you identify the numbers, but instantly it moves to the next, and the former one gone, finished. You don't remember it. You're getting it. It's so fast. Okay. This is how this flower, you said that it's not moving. It's actually moving that fast. Your body is moving that fast. And the, the, the cheesecake, hey, the cheesecake, it moves so fast. How does this move so fast? If you really, if you and me, if we really think about this, it's very scary. Why scary? We could not believe the reality. We see them as so static, okay. Um, the flower is there, the cheesecake is there, okay, I'll get it after five minutes, right? In reality, the cheesecake that you feel attached to the attached to this cheesecake, before five minutes, what you what you attach to when you go to reach that, reach that, it's already gone. It's already gone, right? So it's very scary. It's very scary. And if you if we really meditate on this. How to meditate? Don't just think of everything moves so fast. No, it'll never move like this. You have to reduce from the very gross to the subtler, to the subtler, to the intellectually. Your brain is being exercised. Your mind is being exercised. Subtler, subtler, subtler. Then you say at times you see the, for example, even the walls, you see the wall is like vibrating. And then you you go out, you see anything, and somebody thinking of, oh, I want to build a house, house which is very strong. The moment you think about the person talking about very strong, what very strong? Every all composite phenomena they're moving so fast. There's nothing strong. Everything so moving so fast. All composite phenomena. There's nothing really for us to feel attached to. Now, what you feel attached to? The next moment, right? Uh, what you get is one moment older than what you were attached to. You agree? Same. This flower, this flower, T1. T1 and T2, there's a time gap of, T1 and T2, there's a time gap of one millisecond, let's say. One millisecond, and we are attached to the T1 flower. And then T1 flower, you attach, so you want to get it. By the time you, we go to get it, it already moved to the T2 flower. T1 flower is gone. You are, you are not attached to T2 flower, you are attached to T1 flower, but T1 flower, you ne you'll never get it. It's already gone. 
you getting it so if you think about this if you think about this and then of course we need a little bit of time and in this matter i also like to share with you that if you if you are very serious about this we may spend time we may you know do some retreats sit, sit on retreats personal retreats one day retreat two day retreat three day retreat and so forth just meditate on impermanence my first thing about the gross impermanence that your friends your near your family members who passed away and that town this town and so forth gone right recall those things which are so powerful in your mind recall those things and then gradually move to the subtle impermanence subtle impermanence right from the change that you see obvious change that you see on um, say the yearly basis you see that mentally you can reduce this to the the monthly basis daily basis hourly basis minute by minute basis second by second basis millisecond by minute then on that level you want to go subtler well good not necessary on that level it's good enough you see that all comes from that like like vibration like this then it will have a tremendous impact on your emotional world your emotions otherwise can easily be fluctuated into attachment anger and so forth we see that they are just do and say the childish will become very stable and will think of the broader reality where is the okay so this is the about the impermanence we can spend time to meditate on this this all this falls under the analytical meditation is not about is not single point meditation analytical meditation once you once that analytical meditation becomes very stable then you can integrate this single point meditation with this so this is the all composite things the impermanent so from this we see what it is like that wow i can't believe that look at this flower it looks so steady but it's not it's deceptive i've been deceived my unconscious is deceiving me look at my body my body it looks not changing at all actually it's changing actually your body is changing momentarily it is so fast if you see a more body really changes so fast then attachment to our body will be much less if you see other things changing so fast our attachment will be much less this is reality so the point is that with this the same a very important thing of the gross impermanence gross impermanence meditation will help us to suppress suppress or diminish the gross the afflictions the attachment design so forth and then this with subtle impermanence it will take us to a deeper understanding and deeper realization and your you will really feel a sense of urgency of the practices that dharma okay so then what happens is that when you see that things are moving so fast right then the automatically there's a fear there for example say that if you are in a train station unknown person Picks you up and throws you into a very fast moving train, right? What do you feel? Happy? Not happy? Very scared. Why scared? Why scared? Because you don't know where this train is taking you. Faster the train moves, more the fear. You agree? Faster the train moves, more the fear. So who decides where the where this train is taking you? The train driver decides. right say for example say that say that the if things are moving so fast which means first moment changes to second moment second moment changes to the, the third moment so third moment is decided by this fact second moment yes that is the cause second moment is decided by the first moment that's the cause of the second moment so it's all determined by the previous causes so what causes in a case say the with the train train the the way the train goes is decided by the driver and the driver is your mother or father will take you to a picnic spot is good but if the driver is under the sway of the terrorists there's no escape you will die you will be taken to the slaughter house in a case the driver is her mind and her mind is unfortunately it is under the control of the control of the terrorists which is self grasping ignorance afflictions afflictions particularly self grasping ignorance so our mind is under the control contaminated by the worst of the 
the afflictions, self-grasping ignorance. So this will only take us to miseries. So what is the second seal? What is the second seal? Hey. Louder. All contaminated things are of suffering nature. Your mind, when contaminated by the contaminated by the contaminations. What is contaminations? Contamination. Contaminated means there should be contamination. <clears throat> contamination, afflictions. Afflictions are the contaminations. And the world to which is self-grasping ignorance. Our mind, when it is is directed by the contamination of self-grasping ignorance, it will only take us to miseries. This is the meaning of all contaminated things are suffering nature. You getting it? We'll stop here. Deyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Rasam Gate Bodhiswaha Deyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhiswaha Tyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhiswaha three prostrations.